Hi everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been building fish farms for over 10 years. Today we're going to talk about a business plan of an Australian red clock rayfish farm with a capacity of 10 tons per year. We'll figure out what Australian crayfish is and how it's farmed in RAS, what the technology is, what equipment, building and infrastructure are required, what are operational costs and capital investment, what is the profitability of the whole business? And in general, how can you set up an efficient, profitable Australian Red Clock Rayfish farm? Be sure to watch this video to the end, because after watching it, you will be able to make up your own effective business plan for this type of farm. Why Australian crayfish and not as European counterpart? Well, first of all, what is the Australian crayfish? It's probably already clear from its name that it was imported from Australia. It has been farmed all over the world for about 20 years, and it was brought to Russia during the last 5-7 years and began to be actively grown by local farmers, and they are very fond of it. Incidentally, nowadays about 70% of all Australian crayfish worldwide is still grown in China. Yes, it's exactly China. They grow it right in the rice fields, just imagine. But in Russia, its production is still quite modest. But nevertheless, farmers love farming it. And I will tell you why. Well, first of all, it's for its phenomenal growth rate. Imagine, even not in rats, but in open ponds, but in ones with the warm water, it can reach 100-200 grams weight in just one season, and river crayfish reaches the same weight in 7 or 8 years only. What a difference in growth rates! And that's just the first peculiarity. The second is, of course, its meat. Imagine, Australian crayfish has up to 30% meat content in its total weight. With all that, the river crayfish has no more than 15 or 20 percent. This is the second very important factor. And the third factor is its very good compatibility with intensive farming systems. It has lower cannibalism rate than river crayfish. It grows well in warm water ass. It reproduces well. It matures quickly. All in all, an excellent option from all points of view, especially taking into account the fact that the meat of Australian crayfish is also valued higher than that of river crayfish. Well, why not engage in farming it? In fact, if it's more efficient than the river crayfish, which you and me are accustomed to eating. Now let's briefly talk about the technology of Australian crayfish farming. In RAS, the estimate indicators are usually 100 grams of weight and about 10 months of growing to this weight. Yes, of course, Australian crayfish can grow to this weight even faster, but these are still estimates. The water temperature is 26-28 degrees Celsius. It's advisable to farm your own stocking material, because buying stocking material from other suppliers makes farming it rather unprofitable, as fry is relatively expensive. It takes a lot of fry per 1 kg of grow-out crayfish, so this additional cost is very substantial. You can just form your own breadstock, spread it between the tanks, get the lava and raise it to fry stage, and you will spend nothing but your farm area and some feed to produce your own fry. By the way, one female crayfish gives up to 1,000 lava when spawning. So, in order to get, for example, 200,000 pieces of lava, you need only 200 females, and that's not much. Feed what to feed the crayfish with. You can buy ready-made extruded feeds that are suitable, for example, for African catfish or sturgeon. The crayfish eats them perfectly because they're quite balanced. You can feed it with self-made feed, some kind of paste feed. A lot of amateurs are into that, but I recommend the golden mean, that is, to produce your own feed, but you can make it with the help of your own pelletizer. You buy grains, fish meal, vitamin additives, mix it all in a granulator, make pellets, dry them and get excellent in quality feed at a cost two, three times lower than you are offered in the shops. Why not? Provided that the digestive tract of crayfish, unlike that of sturgeon and trout, lets it eat in such pelleted feed and digest it perfectly. Let's talk about RAS, which you can grow crayfish in. Generally speaking, in systems like the one I'm standing next to, you can grow both grow-out crayfish, broodstock, as well as your own fry. The only difference is the size of the trays. 
and as far as trays are concerned, water depth of no more than 20 cm is recommended. Therefore, you can put these trays in several levels to make better and more efficient use of every square meter of your building. Here there are three levels, but there could be four or even five floors. That way you get the maximum from each square meter of your building. Why not try? RAS Equipment To begin with, there are pipelines, through which the water from the trays is discharged to the water treatment units. The first stage of water treatment is mechanical. Usually, drum filter is installed at industrial farms, and it excellently copes with mechanical water treatment. The next stage is treatment from dissolved impurities, particularly nitrogen, a biofilter. For example, a fixed or sinking media biofilter is installed, which treats the water from dissolved impurities very well. Next is disinfection. It's optional, but at industrial farms it's desirable, just in case, for safety reasons. Oxygen. If you keep crayfish at low densities of less than 2 kg per square meter, you may not use any oxygen at all. But at industrial farms, I still recommend using an oxygen generator and an oxygen concentrator. They will compensate for the lack of oxygen when the farm is at its maximum capacity. What else? In general, the control panel that monitors and controls all the equipment, pumps, water return pipelines, these white pipelines, they return water back to the trace. Sometimes the page monitoring and control system is needed, though it's optional equipment. And that's it. There is nothing else needed in terms of RAS. RAS for Australian crayfish is as simple as possible. Its peculiar feature, unlike RAS for main species of fish such as sturgeon and trout, is that oxygen is not required. Disinfection is not necessary. Also, in general, the equipment is less powerful. Water exchange is only one turn per hour. That is, if you have 100 cubic meters of water, you therefore pump 100 cubic meters per hour through the water treatment system. Ozonation is not recommended at crayfish farms, as ozone has a negative effect and impact on these hydrobiotes. Beyond. I would not recommend use ozone at crayfish rest farms. Well, that's probably it. Peculiarities of growing and handling Australian crayfish. Firstly, inside these trays, as a rule, special honeycomb elements are placed. Usually, they are made of simple 50 mm sewage pipe and are connected to each other in sections. The crayfish hides inside them when it molts, so that its friends and fellows can eat it as long as it's protected. Be sure to use these honeycomb units inside the trays. Further, there is a lot of manual labor at crayfish farms, so the amount of stuff is slightly increased, but increased by means of unskilled labor, who constantly clean the crayfish trays, feeding and inspecting the whole farming process. Well, the last of the features is regular sorting. If you don't sort the crayfish in time, they start eating each other. That is, crayfish are cannibals. Even Australian crayfish are also cannibals. So be sure to sort your crayfish between trays by size, at least once a month. Let's also talk about the requirements for building a farm. To begin with, as RAS is a closed environment with a controlled microclimate, you need an insulated building. Any insulated hangar with a ceiling height of 3.5 meters or more will do. Well, for example, hangar made of sandwich panels, frameless hangar, foam concrete block hangar. In general, there are a lot of options. In order to grow 10 tons of crayfish, as today we are considering a business plan for 10 tons of crayfish, we need about 1,000 square meters, which will include utility rooms and RAS technological line for grow out crayfish, broodstock department, an incubation block. A 1,000 square meter hangar, for example, measuring 20 by 50, is perfectly fine. The next thing you need is the utility lines. They need to be routed to these hangar. What's that? It's electricity. At least 25-30 kilowatts you need to supply all the infrastructure of the hangar, including the technological equipment with electrical power. Basically, it's not very much for industrial production. Next, you will need water. At least 5 cubic meters per hour is recommended. You can supply water from a borehole or mains water supply. A borehole has obvious advantages if the water is of good quality. And the main advantage is that it's free. So, if there is a possibility to provide for a borehole, do that without hesitating. In principle, the water consumption of such a farm is not more than 2 cubic meters per hour. This is more than enough for production. Other 5 cubic meters is our reserve, just for emergency cases. 
Generally speaking, the same amount of wastewater you will need to discharge. This wastewater can be successfully drained to a biopond, which is an ordinary pond dug on your side, and there the water will be sedimented for a month. So all the wastewater from your farm will be directed there for treatment and subsequent dissolving in the soil, or overflowing further into other open water bodies. Alternatively, if your land area doesn't allow for it, you either discharge wastewater into the central sewage system or put in your own local sewage treatment plant, which is quite compact. And the last thing you need is heating. There are two ideal options. Either main gas, which is as autonomous, reliable and cheap as possible, or wood pellets. What is the second option? These are compressed wood pellets. They are environmentally friendly. You put them into automatic boilers, and you only need to replenish the stock of pellets in the hopper of the boiler. They are just slightly more expensive than gas. Let's talk about how many and what kind of tanks are required, as well as what kind of water treatment equipment is needed. Well, let's start with the fact that in order to farm grow out crayfish, you need about 300 trees measuring 5 meters, 1 meter wide and 25 centimeters high. The total volume of one such tree is about 1 cubic meter. And in addition to these trays for grow out crayfish, you will need about 50 tanks with a rough size of 2 meters by 2 meters. They should be divided into sections for holding bird stock, spawning, incubation, and non growing fry. So it's your fry block, in fact. Each of these groups of trays should be separate brass, but that's the ideal. And it's done in order to conveniently separate incubation block from grow out department. Now let's consider the prime cost of growing crayfish and rice. I'll take a calculator to make the calculations easier and quicker. To start with, of course, you need to spend money on feed. In order to grow 10 tons of crayfish, you need about 15 tons of feed, at an average cost of 0.7 US dollar per kilogram. So we get 10,500 US dollars. Keep this figure in mind. Stock and material. We assume that we have our own incubation block. Thus, we grow our own fry. It makes no sense to buy stock and material for such a farm from third party suppliers. The next is electricity. An approximate average consumption is 15 kilowatts multiplied by 24 hours and 365 days. We get 131,400 kilowatts multiplied by 0.1 US dollar makes 13,140 US dollars. This is the cost of electricity. Heating. Let's imagine that we don't have mains gas, and such situations are very common, so we have to replace it with pellets. To heat the entire farm of 1,000 square meters in area, approximately 120 tons of pellets per year will be required, multiplied by 0.08 US dollar, which is the price per kilogram. We get 9,600 US dollars. This is our annual expenditure on pellets. Stuff. This is one of the most significant costs of this farm. We need a biologist with a monthly salary of 650 US dollars. In addition, four operators. 400 US dollars each. That is 1,600 US dollars. In total, it makes 2,250 US dollars. At 40% of taxes, the farm operates officially. And multiply this by 12 months. So we get 37,800 US dollars. Memorize this figure and probably two additional figures. The first is the expenses on consumables and maintenance. Let's take 2,650 US dollars. In principle, these are not obligatory expenses, but all the same, some trifle things may need to be repaired or changed. And the second, the cost of logistics and sales is another 6,500 US dollars. Well, now let's sum everything up and calculate the total amount, and we get the figure of around 80,000 US dollars. These are the operating costs that you will incur annually to grow 10 tons of crayfish. How should you calculate the cost of one kilogram? It's very simple. Divide 80,000 US dollars by 10 tons, and you will get the figure of 80 US dollars per kilogram. Could it be less? Yes, of course, provided that you use even more efficient system. But we are now talking about an average crayfish farm. So 80 US dollars per kilogram is the prime cost including marketing. And now let's proceed to marketing and sales. Where could you sell crayfish? I think everyone knows crayfish equals what? Of course, where there is beer, there is crayfish. You can sell it anywhere people actively drink in beer. There it will be in high demand. Beer restaurants, beer shops, basically just restaurants where you can order and eat crayfish. And of course, don't forget about online sales with direct delivery to the final consumer. These are the main sales channels. Of course, there are also markets, stores, fairs. There are many more options for its marketing. But the basis is still that crayfish literally equals beer. What are the market prices? 
the average wholesale price for crayfish, for Australian crayfish of course, except for seasonal fluctuations when large volumes of river crayfish are offered to the customers, is 14 20 US dollars per kilogram. The average retail price is between 20 34 US dollars per kilogram. Of course, processing adds value, and we will talk about it a little bit later. Well, let's now calculate with you the annual turnover. We take the average wholesale price, the average retail price, 15 US dollars and 25 US dollars correspondingly. Fractured by 5 tons, we get 200,000 US dollars. That's our entire annual turnover. I think that's easy to guess that if we subtract 80,000 US dollars from 200,000 US dollars, we will get the net profit of 120,000 US dollars. I'll tell you right away. If you go into processing, you can undoubtedly add another 27,000, 40,000 US dollars to that figure. But let's take the minimum. 120,000 US dollars is our net profit per year. And it's the profit from grow out crayfish sales. Let's now add 27,000, 40,000 US dollars for processing. That's the extra net income that processing will provide you. I won't go deep into the calculations now, as there are different final processed products. Well, I guess the format of this video just won't allow it. Let's simply add another 27,000 US dollars, which we get from processing. The total makes 147,000 US dollars, and another 27,000 US dollars from the sale of stocking material, because selling stocking material from a crayfish farm like this is a must. It's a profitable and good deal. In total, we get 174,000 US dollars a year. Now let's summarize. 120,000 US dollars from the sale of grow-out non-processed crayfish. Minimum 27,000 US dollars additional profit on processing. That's added to 120,000 US dollars as the result of processing of part of the crayfish. And the last 27,000 US dollars is income from the sale of stocking material. The total makes 174,000 US dollars. <laughs> Now, in order to understand the payback period of this farm, let's first understand how much capital investment the whole project will require. I presume that the site with all utility lines will cost something around 65,000 US dollars. In addition to that, 65,000 US dollars, 330,000 US dollars, at 330 US dollars per square meter, will cost the tanky construction of a 1,000 square meters building. Another investment in the amount of 330,000 US dollars will be needed for turnkey rest technological solution and equipment. The total makes 725,000 US dollars. So 725,000 US dollars is the capital investment. 174,000 US dollars a year is our net profit. I think it won't be hard to calculate the payback period. The average payback period for such a farm, taking into account various nuances, would be 4 years at the most. We can take up to 5 years just in case, but an adequate payback period should be around 4 years. Yes, of course, a lot of people will object and say, you don't take depreciation into account, and you don't take into account the interest rates on loans. Of course, they will be right. There are additional costs as well as additional revenues. Each particular project is calculated individually. Now we have worked out a general business model. Otherwise, it would be too complicated and sophisticated. And clearly, these prices and costs vary depending on your country and region. These figures are not adapted to real ones that you can easily get in your region. I mean the variables. However, with the help of this business model, by simply replacing the values with those relevant to your country, you will certainly be able to easily perform the same calculations and get the understanding of this farm payback period. Well, that's probably all for today. That was the business plan for growing Australian crayfish and rice. I hope you found this information useful and liked it. And if so, please spread the like button and subscribe to my channel. That was Anton Pelcher. Bye.